Welcome again. This is Ultimate Academy's team, and this will be the fourth lecture of Onyx Financial Track. In this lecture, we will cover the screen's branch details, chart of account setup, call center setup, general encoding, translate caption, approval levels, and also the taxes screen. Let's get right into it. So first of all, we will open up the branch details. We'll go to the screen, and in this screen, the user can add branch details or edit existing branch details. The screen is divided, as we can see, into two sections. The upper section is about the main or, let's say, basic data. And the lower screen or the lower section, I'm sorry, is about the details of the branch. We'll go through each section so you would be aware of what kind of data or information that you will need to enter in both. Let's start, first of all, with the basic data before we move on to the details. The company number we cannot edit from the screen. Then we have the branch uh, which the system fills in automatically in the right order. So branch one means that it's the first branch you're entering under company number one. The year field is basically for the financial year. So we're in the financial year of 2019. Company name and foreign name cannot be modified in the screen as well because we've already added them in the company details screen that was in the previous lecture. Then we have the branch name, which is the name of the branch in the system's language, whether it's Arabic or English. And foreign name uh, is the name of the branch in any other language, basically. So we're going to enter Egypt branch in the branch name and foreign name, like we said, is in any other language. If you're using the English interface, by the way, then enter the branch's name in English in the foreign name field because otherwise the branch will be displayed as just the ordinal number or maybe an empty field as well. Then we'll move on to the next um, uh, field, which is group code, which is the group that we've already created in branches group screen. There's this window on the side of the screen on the right where you can add the branches logo. To add the logo, click on the plus sign, then browse your file and select the image um, of the logo that you want to assign to this branch. The image format, by the way, has to be TIFF. Alright, so the X sign um, next to the window as well is basically if you want to delete the existing logo. Now let's move on to the details tab. We'll find the fields related to the branch's address, telephone number, and fax number. You can also add the information that will show up on the reports header. Just add that information in the fields headers first, second, and third. These three fields on the left are going to be filled in in Arabic. And the same fields on the right will be filled in in English. Then you can choose, of course, the country, province, city, and area or region. Um, and you can also identify the taxation information in the taxes fields um, at the bottom. Now we'll move on to the second tab of the branches details, uh, archive and documents. Here we can add the document that you uh, or that we want to archive from document type drop down menu. Uh, for example, commercial register. In the following field document number, we write down the number of the document. Then you will enter the issue date of the document in the issue date field. All right, an expiry date is basically the date the document expires and needs to be renewed. In duration alert, you will enter the renewal date so that the system can alert you or notify you whenever your renewal date is up. So we'll just enter like any random date, for example. All right, so the fields one, two, three, four, and five are empty. So you can later on um, change their name and add any information that you need to record. Uh, and I'm sorry, I forgot one field, which is renew date, and that is the actual renewal date. Issue place also is self-explanatory. It's basically where you issued that document. All right, and issue place, we will just, you know, enter the name of the place or the name of the, um, the office where we got that document issued. Alright, and that's basically everything for this screen. Moving on to chart of accounts setup, where you can basically identify the accounts types, classification, and reports as well. You can also add accounts groups. So you'll see that it's divided into four tabs, account type, account groups, 
account classification, and account reports type. I'm sorry, account report types. So we'll start with account types, which can either be main or sub accounts. The most important checkbox um, in the table here is affected by transactions. We'll check the sub accounts as they will be the ones affected by the transactions. Otherwise, nothing will be affected. All right, so the next tab is accounts groups. If you're using account stream method while creating your chart of accounts, then you don't necessarily have to add anything in the screen, but you can if you want to. But if you're using other methods, for example, the bulk or group methods to create your chart of accounts, then it's absolutely necessary to add your groups like assets, liabilities, expenses, and revenue. The third tab is accounts classification. Here we combine the uh, homogeneous accounts that are of different nature, like the vendor's accounts, for example, it reflects on liabilities account. Supplier's advanced payments, however, reflects on the assets account. So here we're talking about vendor's accounts in general, which are homogeneous, but each of these accounts has a different nature. So now we can classify the vendors. The number will also appear um, automatically in the classification name, we will add the name of the classification. For example, vendor statement. All right, so in foreign name, if you're using English interface, write down the classification name in English. If you want to add another classification before you've saved the previous one, then you must manually enter the number of this classification. But if you've already saved the previous classification, then the number will be added automatically and the rest of the fields will be filled out just like we learned together. The final tab in the screen, Accounts Reports Type. Um, you can add all types of reports you want, like balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow. The most important note in the screen that you have to check the balance sheet from the right. So uh, we'll enter the type name and for name. I guess we've already established how to add that part and in which language. Number, type, and for name will be filled, of course, as we can see. All right. All right, and then we'll save, moving on. Now let's talk about cost center setup. First of all, the aim of the screen is to define cost center types and add cost center groups according to the company's financial policy and management. We have two tabs, cost center types, where you can add the cost center type, either sub or main. Don't forget to check any sub cost center for it to be affected by transaction, by the way. So the checkbox is on the right. Um, the second tab is the cost center groups. And from this tab, you can basically create cost center groups according to the nature of the business, like, for example, production cost centers and managerial cost centers. All right, so let's open up the following screen, which is general encoding. And we want to also bring up branch details so we can, um, so you'll be able to demonstrate what we're about to explain next. So the purpose of general encoding is to encode specific fields that you have in some screens, which you will actually find in this table. Let's see an example. If we bring up branch documents, we'll select it from the table first, and we'll have a look at the screen as well as a quick reminder of what it looks like so we can view the changes afterwards. All right, so this is what it looks like here, and um, as you can see, there are three types of documents and we will add another one. So we will go back to general encoding, click on modify, then we'll write the name and the foreign name. The number and subcode will be filled in automatically, by the way. Alright, so we've already established that foreign name is going to be in English. And on the right, you'll see the checkbox that says inactive. If we check it, then the system will automatically record the date this change was made and by which user. In inactive reason, of course, you can specify why you have deactivated this document. 
Now let's go back to archive and documents to see the changes that we've made. All right, and there we go. The fourth type has been added. All right, so in the system tree, the next two screens in order are administrative structure types and employees data, uh, employees data encoding. These are managerial screens and they will be covered in Onyx HR track, not the financial track. Now let's move on to translate caption. This screen gives you the option to rename additional fields throughout the screen. So if you click on edit right away, the system will give you an error message to enter the um, the details to modify so you can actually uh, so you will actually need to choose first the screen which contains the fields that you want to edit to change their names um, you can do that by clicking on view then you choose the screen you want from this window or you can just click once on search and if you know the number of the screen you can just type it down and click again on search the system will populate the screen's details uh, in the table below there's also another way, click twice on search, then use the left and right arrows to navigate between the screens. After you've selected the screen, click on modify, then just change the names to whatever you want. On a side note, by the way, if you're using the English uh, interface, then just change the English fields. If you're using Arabic as the system's language, then change the Arabic fields. Let's see an example. We will bring up Archive and Documents tab in Branch Detail screen. All right, so we have fields three, four, five are empty. So we'll just choose one of them, change its name. So you will edit, enter the name, and don't forget to save so that your changes can reflect on the screen. So um, you will just need to close Branch Detail screen actually and reopen it to see uh, the changes that you have made for them to reflect. All right, there we go. So the next screen that we'll review is approval levels. It's divided into three sections. The first section is screen where you can select the screen you want to apply the approval level on. For example, let's choose purchase request. Then we will click on modify so the fields will open up for editing. In the upper table, we'll specify the levels of approvals. As we can see here, we currently only have one level. Let's name it purchases manager approval. All right, so All right, sorry about that, the keyboard was kind of lagging. <laughs> and in the lower table, we will specify the user who will be granted the approval. So for example, level one, which is purchases manager approval will be given to the purchases manager, or for now, we'll just give it to the administrator because that's the only user that we have recorded. By the way, to bring up the list of the users, you will just click on F9 and select the specific user. All right, so that is pretty much everything for the screen. Now we'll move on to um, tax a slide screen. All right, so it says it said duplicate record because we've tried to do that earlier, but um, never mind. I guess you will not have to go through that if you enter the record once. So um, again, through tax a slide screen, you can add it basically according to the law. And in types of taxes screen, you will specify the types of taxes that you're dealing with regarding sales, purchases, or all, uh, which is basically for both, like VAT, value added tax. The last screen that we have is methods tax calc, which is practically how you calculate your taxes. Choose the branch, tax type, which we have entered in the previous screen, types of taxes, then um, we will choose the method from this drop-down menu. Let's see an example. We will, we will call basically the first method no taxes. And 
yeah, without tax, basically, and uh, which means basically that no taxes will be calculated. So we will choose no tax, um, and then. All right, so we will choose the branch and then the activation date of the taxes. And of course, all of this will be according to a company's financial policy and management as well. So this concludes our fourth lecture. Thank you so much for listening. Please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and we will see you again in the following lecture.